As we previously stated, we're going to look at gravity and the full effects of gravity, or more of the full effects of gravity. So the first thing we we're going to cover is, what is the force of gravity? Well, for, for us, we have what's called the universal law, or Newton's law of universal gravitation. So let's take a step back and think about what we've done in the past. Well, in the past, every time we've seen it, we've always had that little notation on all these problems that say we're near the Earth's surface or it's always been implied. But the reason is, is that if we have stuff near the Earth's surface, then the force due to gravity between one object and the Earth, our second object, is just proportional to mg. So our mass of our object times this little value g. Well, when we actually start looking at the full effects of gravity, we start seeing that the attraction between the two objects that have mass, they have, it has a different form of the equation. And the general form of the equation that we're going to use has a little bit more of a complicated form, but even if it is a little bit more complicated, we're going to actually walk through this, so don't get too scared. What it says is that the force of gravity, F, between two objects that have mass 1 and mass 2, that are separated by a distance r is given or is modeled after this equation. So let's start working through and see what each of these quantities mean. Well, we have two objects, our shoe and our cantaloupe. I'm going to define these as mass 1 and mass 2. Doesn't matter which one I use, just as long as when I label 1, mass 1, I'm talking about the shoe, mass 2 is talking about the cantaloupe. The next question is, what is r? And you'll notice that r is a vector. In this equation down here, r is a magnitude squared. However, we have this unit vector here. We'll talk about that in just a second. But r is the displacement ve vector measured from the object pulling to the object being pulled. Sounds a little bit complicated, but we need to get our direction straight. Otherwise, we introduce a minus sign in the wrong direction. So the object we're going to measure is from the object doing the pulling. In this case, the object doing the pulling on the object being pulled. So object doing the pulling is M2, and the object being pulled is M1. So this will be the distance from, in our previous cases, maybe the Earth, on the shoe near the Earth's surface, or the cantaloupe on the shoe. So the, the cantaloupe will cause the shoe to be attracted to it. It's an attractive force always. And what it means is that the force is going to be given by this equation. We look at it, and we see that the direction, this unit vector, is a unit vector along this direction. It just tells us which way r points. It doesn't give us any magnitude. The magnitude part comes in the r squared but the direction comes from the r hat. Well, this means that opposite to the direction, so if the cantaloupe is pulling on the shoe, then the shoe feels a force, this force over here, in the opposite direction due to this minus sign. So this equation is a little bit more complicated. Most people will see that uh, say that it's gm m over r squared, or gm1 m2 over r squared. The minus sign in this r hat give us the direction. So it's pretty easy to see that if we're looking at what's the force on the shoe due to the cantaloupe, that the shoe is drawn towards the cantaloupe. We could reverse this and look at what's the force on the cantaloupe due to the shoe, and in that case, the force would point from the cantaloupe to the shoe because the shoe is pulling on the cantaloupe. So there is a Newton's third law that happens when we switch these uh, indices, when m1 and m2 essentially switch values, what happens is really this r hat vector changes direction, so our force turns opposite. And last but not least, one thing we didn't completely mention is that g is a constant. Of course, there's going to be a proportionality constant, uh, just to account for the different units we can use. And the one we use with the MKS system is 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11. It's a pretty small number, 10 to the minus 11 uh, meters cubed per kilogram second squared. 
So in the next video, we're going to show a pretty easy example of how to use these things, but it's not that hard of a quantity. A little bit more complicated than our, G, or than our MG, but this will govern any two objects being attracted to each other due to their mass.